Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jamie Fenn, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to edit photos in DaVinci Resolve. I actually reached out on my social media channels, and I asked you to send me your raw photos so I could edit them in today's video. So thank you all for your submissions. I was overwhelmed with how many photos I got, and although there were a ton, I could only select a few. So without further ado, let's open up DaVinci Resolve and edit some photos. A few things before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know, there's not one specific way to edit photos. This is just how I would edit these photos. There's a ton of different ways you can do it, but this is all subjective to me, so hopefully this will just kind of give you a good idea of how to go about different situations with different types of photos. So while you're in DaVinci Resolve, before you even wanna start editing photos is come down to our cog in the bottom right-hand corner and select our master settings and change our timeline resolution. I'm just gonna change it to the 4K for now. If you want to customize what your camera outputs to the exact you know, pixel size, feel free to just type in your numbers here, then click save. Another thing you need to know is that DaVinci only accepts certain type of file formats. There were some formats I received that I couldn't use just directly from downloads. So if you run into that issue, you can download Adobe DNG Converter so what you can do is select the folder of where your photos are that you want to convert and then select a folder where you want to export them and then convert. You can also do this in Lightroom if you export a DNG. This first photo here that we have, this is by a gentleman that goes by Tazos Photography. This guy actually sent me some amazing photos and I really wanted to start off going you know, hard with a good banger because this one is super fun. It was awesome to work with. So thank you, Tazos, I really appreciate it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is obviously resize this. So I'm gonna click on the actual uh, image and come up to inspector and just kind of make this big enough to the point where there's nothing showing as far as like black on the sides. Go into the color tab and right off the bat, I like to come over to the clip node viewer window over here and hold down alt and just push S and while holding down alt and just kind of get a few nodes started. Next, I want to click on my waveform just to kind of see how bright everything is in the scene. I'm gonna turn the saturation down and adjust my highlights. Just bring those down a little bit and I'm gonna leave the shadows where they are. Great, now I'm gonna bring up the saturation again and put it back to 50. Next, what I like to do is add some contrast. So I'm gonna to come to the curves and bring down the shadows a bunch and bring up the highlights just a tiny bit. And this image looks a little bit warm. So on my next node, I'm going to maybe, you can adjust white balance by clicking on this white balance picker and you can kind of select what you want to be white in the shot. That makes things a little bit cooler when I click over here. And if I wanna manually do it, I can click on the number two and bring the temperature down and even bring the tint down a little bit just because it looks kind of purplish as well. There's both ways, you know, it's all up to you. It's all personal preference. Next, I wanna look at my vector scope and just kind of see where colors are. There is a bunch of color in this already, so I don't wanna push saturation too much, but I will just a little bit. So I'm gonna click on one down here. And this is on my next node and just kind of push saturation. I don't ever really wanna go beyond this imaginary line connecting each one of these squares that represents a different, you know, hue of color for the shot. I actually had a cool idea for this. I want to key out the sparks and then add a LUT. That way the, the sparks are really punching through and it really gives a good contrast. So what I'm gonna do is create another node, come down here to my qualifier and hold down and drag over the sparks at the brightest point, click on the magic wand and I can see what is now selected. I'm gonna bring my nodes up here just kind of continue the workflow. Hold down Alt S, create another node. And then I'm gonna hold down Alt and push L. That way we create a layer mixer node. I'm gonna connect the qualified range that I selected and connect it to this node here. And on this node, I'm just gonna add one of my LUTs from my most recent LUT pack. And there's one that I really like called Mountains. And that really gives it a cool fade look. Looks really cool, but at the same time, the range of the qualifier is not affected. I can come back to the qualifier and kind of 
fine tune some things because there is some yellow in here that's a little weird and just kind of turn up my denoise my clean black maybe just a little bit and the clean white and turn up the blur that way it kind of blurs the selection of what I'm choosing if you don't want to add a light you don't have to you can just turn that off and leave it like that but maybe you know come down to the key and turn down the intensity of the LUT that way it's not too crazy of a change so I had so many cool ideas when I first saw this photo and the one idea specifically that I really wanted to work with was adding some like really intense sparks flying at you so what I did is I went onto YouTube and I found some stock footage and got some overlays and I took screenshots of those overlays and I previously already added these in for you know just to save some time but if you want to add an overlay and do something like that which I think is such a cool addition to this photo you'll drag it in and what will happen is you'll see your overlay and then what you'll want to do is position it and come up to your composite mode and scroll down and select screen Tazos, thank you so much. This was super epic to work on. Really fun photo. Hope you enjoyed the edit. All right, let's move on. So this next photo is from Jacob Burkhart. Thank you so much for your submission, Jacob. You've probably seen a lot of his work. He has done a ton of filming for Sam Colder. He is currently working with Karmagawa with some charity work. This guy is awesome. He's hilarious. He's a filmmaker and photographer. So I'm going to add a bunch of nodes. And the first thing I want to do is come down to the waveform, look at it turn the saturation down and just kind of adjust our highlights. Now this time I'm actually going to not use the curves and I'm just going to use these primary wheels because there's a bunch of different ways you can approach the same problem and fix it with different tools in the color tab. Next I'm going to bring down the lift to the point where the waveform is almost touching zero and then I'm going to bring the saturation back into the image. Now we have a good well-balanced shot. Another thing we can do on the same note if we want is select our white balance. Maybe I'll just pick something like a neutral color here in the clouds. So maybe something like that. Next, I'm going to add some contrast. And instead of using the curves, I'm going to click on one down here and turn up the contrast to about 1.3. Looks good. On the next node, I'm going to add some saturation, but I'm going to look at the vector scope and I'm going to pump some saturation until I'm kind of happy with it. Sometimes it's nice to just crank it up all the way and see what happens. But I typically like to just kind of get my saturation in between the center point and each one of these hues. All right, so this image already has some vignetting on it, which I think is actually kind of cool. I was going to do that anyways, but as I do some color correction, you can see it kind of does focus on Jacob. Maybe for this specific shot, I want to make sure his skin tones are accurate. And I'm going to click on the next node, click on my qualifier, quickly just select his skin tones, come up to the wand and zoom in. And since the range wasn't selected all the way, I can click on this little plus tool here and kind of select what the qualifier did not get the first time around. All right, I can clean that up by turning up the denoise a little bit and cleaning the black and then what i can do is pull up our vector scope i'm going to pull up the big the big guy and i'm going to come over to the offset and just somewhat pull this to the right a little bit just kind of push it towards the color i want which is the red and magenta this is the skin tone indicator line by the way in case you didn't know and if you want to turn that on you can click on the settings up here and turn on a skin tone indicator if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to do skin tones, I'll link it above right now. You can click on it and go check it out. And now say if I want to add a LUT, I'm going to kind of do what I did last time. I'm going to create a new node and then hold down Alt and push L. And then I'm going to connect the blue alpha channel to that node and turn on another LUT for this one. And maybe I will select, um, let's do TNO Day. So look at that final look. Super cool, right? Love it. And if you want, you can add another node after the layer mixer and come in here and add some sharpness. I like to do just a tiny bit of sharpness on photos. I don't want to go over, you know, overboard with it. Turn up the level a little bit. Coring softness. Turn that up a little bit. We have a really cool looking photo. So before, after. Sick. Okay. 
Let's move on. All right, so this next photo was, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I'm gonna call you Q. Thank you Q so much for your submission. And he's a travel filmmaker, photographer, lifestyle portrait, a quadruple threat creator. Go check out his link. He's actually a really funny guy. If you follow his story, he's got some funny stuff. So I appreciate it. Thanks, Q. Um, so the first thing we want to do with this photo is obviously it is shot in a portrait style. So we need to come back to our cog down here and just swap these around. And what we need to do is rotate this photo 90 degrees so it fits with our canvas. Okay, so as you can see, this image is pretty dark. The exposure definitely needs to be changed. So I'm gonna hold down Alt push S a few times like on my other photos. And the first thing I wanna do is bring up the overall image brightness pretty far, maybe not that far. And maybe even bring up the midtones just a little bit, kind of make the, the rocks pop a little bit. Next thing I wanna do is add some some mood to it. So I'm gonna add a nice little contrast curve like that. Maybe even do something a little bit extreme. As far as color, now I think I could probably pump in a bunch of color to this photo. So I'm gonna come over to the vector scope and I'm gonna turn up saturation all the way and maybe even do another node of saturation. Although it says it's okay in the scopes, I'm looking at the image and it looks a little too saturated. So I don't think I'm gonna go that far with the saturation. So something I want to do is bring out some detail in these rocks here. I'm going to draw a power window around some of these rocks. I'm going to create a new node, come down to the power window, do the pen tool, and just kind of click and drag real quick around these rocks. And then I'm going to come over to my curves and just bring up the midtones. <clears throat> it's kind of like dodge and burning. I'm going to do the same thing for this area down here, and it kind of gives it that HDR look. I'm going to do Alt S, come down to my most recent LUT pack. That looks kind of cool. Really pushes some reds. And this photo introduces some artifacts as far as the chroma and luma channels because when you pump a bunch of saturation or color boost into an image, it kind of just, you know, it does create a little bit of artifacts. So if you look closely here, you can see that there's, you know, some some weird green and little things popping up just some noise but what you can do is come over to our nodes and if you right click on the first node by the way i recommend you do this last not necessarily last in your node tree but last as far as your processing for the image because it is pretty cpu and gpu intensive just right click on the first node here add node and add serial before then you want to come down to our motion effects down here. This is the last option on these, on this little row right here. Click on motion effects and we want to do some spatial noise reduction. I'm going to select enhanced and I'm going to turn the radius up to large, which means it's going to have a larger area to sample from. I'm going to click on this little chain because I want to individually adjust the luma and the chroma channels. So I'm going to turn this up to 34 and then see how far you know, I need to crank this. I'll probably, you know, crank that up to 52. And if you look closely there. Okay. So that's the after. So definitely clean things up for sure. If you here, I'm going to turn it off real quick so you can see the difference. So off, see all the artifacts and the, and the weird, just green and little purple things. And then when you turn it back on, this is a super clean image right out of the camera. So it doesn't need too much. Uh, one last thing I want to do, of course, just kind of at the end is add some sharpening. Attention to detail is what makes your photos and videos kind of stand out from the others. So thank you, Q. You're the man. This image was super epic. I've been here before. This place is amazing and this is a great capture. So thanks again, Q, and let's move on to the next image. Okay, so this shot is provided by Fire to Fork. He also goes by Harry Fisher and he's from Western Australia and has an Instagram and YouTube channel. So thank you, Harry, you are the man. This dog looks very nice. He looks like a very chill dog. First thing I want to try maybe with this photo is selecting the white balance and just selecting him. Make him look a little bit more white. Kind of cools the image down. Kind of balances out pretty well. So I'm going to look at my waveform on the next node and kind of just balance out my highlights. There's nothing super bright white in this shot, so I'm probably not going to mess with the uh, highlights. And the shadows actually look really good. So maybe all I'll do is just add some contrast by using 
the curves and adding a nice S curve here. On the next node, I'm going to turn up the saturation and it looks pretty desaturated. There's not too many crazy colors going on, but I still want to check my vector scope. Let's see, I can turn the saturation all the way up on that node. Looks really cool, kind of getting moody. Looks like you're sitting by the campfire. Looks like you had a long day. Look at this beautiful face. I really want to kind of make the focus on him. So something that we can do is either add a gradient tool or we can add a circle uh, window tool. And by doing that, you can click on the next node, come down here, click on the type of window you want to create. And by default, it's going to affect everything on the inside. So we want to come down here and click on that icon right there. That way, everything on the outside will be a little bit darker once we start adjusting our gamma, which is our midtone range of luminance. I'm going to turn off the power window tool for my mouse. A little bit of a vignette really kind of makes him pop up. All right, I'm going to select a light. I'm going to do something a little bit more desaturated. I'll select the natural desaturation and turn it on. And that kind of gives it a more of a moody feel. I kind of like the original. It does have some warmer shadows. But yeah, this is just a simple, nice looking dog chilling by the campfire photo. So awesome. All right, so this next one is from David Gieb. I don't know how you pronounce that last name. Sorry if I murked that one, but... He is a filmmaker and photographer, and he sent me some epic photos. I really liked this specific shot. It looked incredible. Oh man, this image is gonna be super fun to work with. Okay, so I'm going to bring down the shadows just a tiny bit. I'm gonna bring up the highlights. Select the next node and turn up the saturation while looking at the vector scope. So I'm gonna crank up saturation all the way. I could probably even do another node of color saturation if I wanted to. Really pump it in. There we go. Look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? If I were to adjust the white balance, I could right click on this node here and add a serial B4 and see how this looks when I select white balance, just come up into the clouds. Definitely cools things down. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is click on this next node. And what I'm gonna do in this specific shot is I'm actually gonna click around these rocks and I'm gonna kind of go on the inside of it just because you can adjust afterwards how much this selection actually selects. And as you can see, if I come down here to the adjustments of the transform, you can start to go inside and you can go outside of the line. And then once you do that, you can actually come in here and adjust the insides and the outside points, which is actually really, really awesome and super customizable. But for this example, I'm not going to go crazy with it, but you're going to get the general idea of, of what I'm trying to do here. With that selected, I can come down to our curves and I can bring up the midtones, kind of make those rocks pop. Kind of gives it an HDR look right here. Again, I haven't even added contrast yet. So if I want to, I could come down here and just add contrast until I'm happy with it. So I just put on a LUT called Jungle Fade. It's obviously a little too intense, so you can come down to the key, bring it down to like 40% before, after. I don't know, I almost like the before. I don't even need a lot for this. This is super cool, amazing. Thanks again, David. All right, let's move on to the next photo. So this next photo is by Valenville. I'm not sure if I said that right. Again, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing these names correctly at all, but it looks like this is a female photographer and she has some epic shots and this one specifically stood out to me but the first thing i want to do is fix those highlights so i'm going to come down to the curves and just bring them down also the shadows look actually pretty well balanced maybe i'll bring them up just a tiny bit i'm going to come over to the next node and i'm going to add some contrast so next i want to look at our saturation levels i'm just going to pump up the saturation a little bit check out our vector scope and you know just kind of keep things in the limitations of where we want them and i could pump saturation all the way up if i wanted to but i'm not going to do it for this shot specifically what i do want to do is add a gradient and what's cool is if you want to see what the gradient is doing and where it's affecting you can click on the magic wand and kind of go back and forth and look at it maybe i'll just pull the gradient down a little bit because i want this green to really pop i don't want it to be underexposed at all i don't want you know, to lose detail there. So kind of like on the previous photo, I'm actually just gonna highlight 
and kind of just go around. And what I'm gonna do is come in here and maybe add a little bit of a color boost. Color boost needs to be used very sparingly because if you crank it up too much, it adds a ton of artifacts into the photo. Color boost kind of works like vibrance in Lightroom. Also, we can come over to our curves, kind of bring up the midtones of our curves here. Kind of makes the green really pop, really pop. Another thing I want to do is make our model here stand out. So what I'm going to do is select her, kind of like what I did in the previous node. But I'm going to just kind of go pretty much the inside of, you know, her body shape. I'm going to adjust my outside and the inside just a tiny bit like that. And what I'm going to do is bring up her midtones, you know, making her pop off the photo just a little bit. Not too HDR looking, but just enough to kind of give her a little bit more of attention. And I could also maybe bring up the the contrast on her just a tiny bit, just a little bit. Cool. This is looking really good. This is looking good so far, but there is one thing I noticed that this photo has that the other ones haven't had yet is some chromatic aberration. Up here in the left hand corner, there's like a red line on the outside of this, you know, rock edge right here. In order to get rid of that, you can actually create another node and come up to the open effects and come down to the revival and drag chromatic aberration on top of the node that you just created. So what you can do is zoom in to where it's happening and adjust the red and cyan scale and the red cyan edge to the point where you don't see it anymore. Now it happens with different colors, but for the most part, that kind of just got rid of it, which looks great. Yeah, this image looks super awesome, super clean. Thank you so much again. This is the before. This is the after. Also, if I wanted to, like I could change just the hues of this blue right here real quick. So I could create a new node and come down to our curves, come over to the hue versus hue, click on the selection tool. That way, whenever you select something like this blue up here, it'll create a point. And you can kind of just move this point. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it because we don't need to go and do any crazy purple colors or anything. But it, if I just bring it up a little bit, it kind of gives it like that tealy kind of contrast with her skin tones here. So before, after, it's very slight, but does create a really cool contrast and looks great with this whole image. So thanks again. So once you've done all the corrections for your photo, this is how you export it. So you want to come over to the deliver tab and you want to come select the range of your input and output. So actually, if you just come to the very beginning of the clip and push I and then push O, it'll just select that clip. The image also has to be one frame. So shrink it all the way down to one frame and that will work. Name this uh, thumbnail because I'm probably going to use this one for my thumbnail because it's epic. Then you can browse where you want the photo to go. So I'm just going to select my desktop, click save. Now you want to come down and select the TIFF format. You can select your resolution or you can customize whatever you want your resolution to be, whatever it was, and then you can add to render queue, start render, it renders it out, and voila. So if you guys want any of those LUTs that I used in this video, the link is down in the description. It will help support this channel. I would really appreciate it. And anyways, thank you everybody who submitted once again, and thank you to the photographers for whose photos I used because they were all awesome. They were super fun to edit. I will see you in the next one.